You just won't believe how vastly, hugely, mind-bogglingly big space is, said the author Douglas Adams. By our best estimates, there are more than 100 billion stars in the Milky Way and at least 140 billion galaxies across the universe. This means if galaxies were frozen peas, there'd be enough of them to fill an auditorium the size of the Royal Albert Hall. So how was this unimaginably giant universe created? For centuries, scientists thought the universe always existed in a largely unchanged form, running like clockwork thanks to the laws of physics. But in 1927, a Belgian priest and scientist called Georges Lemaitre put forward another idea. He proposed that the universe began as a large pregnant primeval atom. It exploded and sent out the smaller atoms that we see today. His idea went largely unnoticed. But in 1929, the astronomer Edwin Hubble discovered that our universe isn't static, but is in fact expanding. If so, some scientists reasoned that by rewinding the universe's life, at some point in time, it should have existed as a tiny, dense point. Critics dismissed this. The celebrated astronomer Fred Hoyle sarcastically called this concept the Big Bang Theory, a phrase that would later be adopted by its proponents. Undeterred by sceptics, scientists Ralph Alpha, George Gamow and Robert Herman predicted that if there had been a Big Bang, a faint afterglow should linger somewhere in the universe and we should, in theory, be able to detect it. To do so would require one of the greatest pieces of luck ever to have occurred in science. One day, the astronomers Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson were having a tough time trying to tune into the microwave signals transmitted from the Milky Way. Their radio antenna kept picking up a persistent, weak hiss. Rebuilding the antenna didn't get rid of the noise, nor did clearing out the pigeons that had made it their home. The hiss they tried so hard to remove was in fact the echo of the Big Bang, or cosmic microwave background radiation as it's also known. So, if the Big Bang theory is true, how did it lead to all the planets, stars and galaxies we see today? Thanks to a series of calculations, observations from telescopes on Earth and probes in space, our best explanation is this. Around 13.8 billion years ago, all the matter in the universe emerged from a single minute point in one violent burst. This expanded at incredible speed and at an astonishingly high temperature, doubling in size every 10 to the power of minus 34 seconds, creating space as it rapidly inflated. Within a tiny fraction of a second, gravity, along with all the other forces, was formed. Energy changed into particles of matter and antimatter, which largely destroyed each other. Luckily for us, some matter survived. Protons and neutrons started forming in the first second. Within minutes, these protons and neutrons fused to form hydrogen and helium nuclei. After 300,000 years, nuclei could finally capture electrons to form atoms, filling the universe with clouds of hydrogen and helium gas. After around 380,000 years, it left behind a bath of photons, the cosmic microwave background that Penzias and Wilson accidentally detected. Contained within this were tiny ripples of matter that were stretched to enormous sizes during inflation. In turn, these became the seeds for the galaxies and galactic clusters we see today. If this is how we think the universe began, then how will it end? Well, that's another story entirely. Of course, the final frontier. Or is it? Could we not perhaps think of it as something like the 4,000th floor instead?